Um, so as a Pathways participant, you will take three, ooh, I'm going to modify this so you can actually see this. Um, as a Pathways participant, you'll take three thematically linked courses with a small group of 25 students in your first semester here at Berkeley. Um, the course clusters consist of a central coordinating hub course and two other courses that we call wing courses that are all linked through a common theme. And I'll talk about what those themes are for this fall in, in just a few minutes. Um, the hub courses are small seminar-like settings that provide you with a space to talk about and reflect on the connections between all the three classes that are in your cluster. Um, uh, the wing courses are often large lecture classes, not always, but most of them are large lecture classes. And for those, you'll be assigned to your own specially designated discussion section um, that will only have students from your um, cluster in it. And it, um, that setup allows you to experience basically all three classes in the cluster with the same small group of 25 students. Um, and all three courses will fulfill separate LNS breadth requirements. So it helps move you through your degree progress from your first semester. Um, one last advantage of the program is that it gives you access to basically what is early, easy enrollment. Um, the spaces in the program are given in a kind of first come, first serve basis. I'll talk about that again in a minute. But if you're given one, you'll basically be enrolled automatically into all three classes at the beginning of the enrollment period. Um, you'll still need likely one to two more units to make your minimum unit threshold for full-time student status. In the College of Letters and Science, you have to carry 13 units, and most of these clusters are 11 or 12 units. So you'll still need a small class. Um, and your LNS advisor that you work with as part of the Golden Bear advising process can help make some suggestions about my, what, what might work to help fill in um, your minimum unit threshold. But basically, um, we designed uh, pathways to help you whoops, um, uh, make friends, to move forward in your degree, and to develop your intellectual passions while you're at Berkeley. It's a new program here with us at this campus, but programs like this have been running at a couple of other universities for a little while. And what we know from looking at those other schools is that participants in programs like this tend to earn higher GPAs, they tend to finish their degrees more quickly, and they just tend to enjoy their college experience more, which we think is a, um, a, an effect of that small cohort um, pro, uh, aspect of the program. Um, and you'll be in these small classes with really interesting professors, people who sometimes are world experts in their topics. Um, we hope that these clusters will help you see the world and your relationship to it in new ways. Um, we're really excited about the themes that we have for our clusters for this fall. Um, this fall, you can take courses in California and water, in neuroscience, philosophy, and society, in art, history, and the moral imagination, um, in California from the field where you will study and learn about California from the standpoint of a biologist, an archaeologist, and an urban development expert. Um, we have a cluster on technology and society and filling out the group that we have for this fall. We have one on art, the environment, and economic policy. Um, and in these clusters, you and your classmates will get to experience interesting enrichment um, experiences that largely happen inside of those small hub seminar classes. You'll get to do things like go on field trips, attend cultural events, you'll have guest speakers, you'll have immersive projects for the classes, um, and uh, more things that are like that. Um, one of the clusters this fall involves camping trips to state parks around the Bay Area to learn about the biomes that are there. Um, another one involves going to local art museums. Uh, a third will involve viewing and talking about films and music together. There are all kinds of interesting things that will happen. Um, one of the things that is really important to note about these experiences is that there is no additional cost to you for these experiences. Um, the campus will cover all of the transportation costs, tickets for events, and so forth. You just need to be able to fit them into your schedule. Um, and the dates for those are on the cluster descriptions on the website, um, which I can show you again in a minute. 
Um, a couple of things to think about when you're considering whether to sign up for a Pathways cluster. Um, the first is eligibility. So you need to be a newly admitted first year student in the College of Letters and Science. So it, unfortunately, this program is not available for the College of Engineering or the College of Environmental Design or um, Natural Resources, etc. It's really only available for LNS students right now. Um, you should be in your first semester as a fully matriculated student at um, Berkeley. It's okay if you're doing summer classes this summer, that's fine, but this fall you should be a new student with us. The other thing that you might want to consider is your major. Um, if you are planning a STEM major with significant first year course prerequisites, or if you are something like a pre-med or pre-health major where there are is a a pretty um, firm progression of classes that you need to start early in your time with us. Um, Pathways is probably not a great fit for your academic needs. Um, in those cases, the high unit load of the clusters will actually prevent you from being able to take the classes that you need to start taking probably this fall for your major. Um, having said that, Pathways is a great choice for you if you are unsure as to your major or if you're feeling unsure about how to get started on your academic journey here at Berkeley. Um, and it's also a great choice for you if you're feeling kind of intimidated about how big Berkeley is or kind of overwhelmed by the number of choices that you have around courses. Um, this program should help you with both of those things. Um, one more set of considerations. Uh, if you sign up for a cluster, you have to take the full set of three courses. Um, you can't enroll in the program with only one or two of the courses, although if there are classes and the course descriptions online that you feel like you're interested in, it gives you the course numbers for those classes there. And aside, apart from this small seminar class, which is really only open to students in the Pathway program, you're welcome to go sign up in those side wing classes on your own. Um, so you should feel free to do that. Um, uh, you would just do that independently of the program at your normal enrollment time. Um, in keeping with that, the, the clusters are kind of an all or nothing proposition. So if you drop one course, you really have to drop the whole cluster. Um, if you're signed up for one of the clusters, we really recommend that you try to drop them as soon as possible. If you want to do that, as you'll need to enroll in an entirely new roster of courses. Um, one of the things that you can do if you want to do that is you are welcome to try to switch sections in those side wing classes. So if you want to keep the wing classes, you're welcome to go sign up for a separate section of that if you decide to drop out of the cluster. Um, I Again, um, the out of class enrichment activities like the field trips and so forth are mandatory for the classes. So you really want to be able to check out the dates and times for those to fit them into your schedule. Um, the dates for all of that are, are on the cluster descriptions on the websites. Um, and you should really only add one small one to two unit course on top of your cluster. Um, the clusters are close to a full semester load on their own. Um, I, Berkeley students often have the experience of finding that Berkeley classes are a lot more demanding than their high school classes were. So even if you were someone who did extremely well in high school, give yourself the transition time and really take just the cluster and that one or two unit class. The one exception to that is that there's a cluster that's called California and Water that only carries 10 units. And so for that cluster, you would need to take an additional three to four unit class on that to make your minimum unit threshold for the semester. Um, and so that's the it for the basic information about the program. Um, uh, our website is here on this page, lsfirstyear.berkeley.edu. Um, the website explains each of the clusters in more detail, um, and there's a very important FAQs page that you really, 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 really need to read um, that explains how you sign up for the clusters. Um, I'm going to pause here for a minute in case you want to take a photo of this screen so you have the website or that QR code, which will take you there. Um, again, the website is lsfirstyear.berkeley.edu.
Um, the last thing to know is that the space in the clusters is limited. We're launching kind of a small pilot for this program this fall. So if you know that you're interested, be sure that you visit the website and the facts page, that you go through the sign up form, go ahead and sign up for one of the clusters now um, so that you can be sure of a space. Um, and the key deadlines for this, the sign up form is open now. It's at the top of the home page for that LS um, firstyear.berkeley.edu website. Um, you just click on the sign up form. It'll ask you a couple of questions. It'll prompt you to tell you which of the clusters you really want to be in. It will ask you if you are open to being in another cluster, if you can't get if the first one that you want is full. Um, I, but go ahead and do that now. Um, the deadline is next Wednesday, June 14th. Um, and on June 16th, we'll let you, let you know whether or not you have space in your desired cluster or whether you have been waitlisted for it. Um, when you get that notification, we'll also give you the option to decline a cluster if you're no longer interested in the program so that we can give that space to somebody else on the waitlist. Um, and after that, we'll monitor the class lists and move people into them off of the wait list as space permits. So that's kind of the enrollment process. It's pretty straightforward. Once you sign up and once we let you know that you're in the cluster, we put you into the clusters. We automatically handle that part of your enrollment and you only need to sign up for the one extra class that brings you up to your unit threshold. We'll handle the rest. Um, and so that's really the, the my um, I take down of the or my explanation of the program and its structures. Um, and so I'll pause there and take questions from anyone. Uh, let's see. I see there are a couple of questions in the in the chat. Do units for being part of the pathways count towards the phase one enrollment units? I think uh, I think Olivia. Let me know if you are asking something else, but are you asking about the phase one enrollment period in that? I think if you are, the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, they basically are the units that count towards whatever it is that you're taking in fall semester. Um, and Olivia is also asking, where are most of the classes held? The classes are held um, in person on at the Berkeley campus. There is one exception to that. One of the classes for the California from the field class is an online class, um, but that's the that, that's a um, a synchronous course where you're actually in real time with the professor um, in the lecture online. But other than that, everything is in person on the Berkeley campus. Um, Sophia, is it recommended that you only take one or two other classes that aren't part of the pathways or can you take more? So we really recommend that you give yourself time to acclimate and transition to the academic demands of Berkeley classes. They are what almost everybody finds when they get to Berkeley is that the academic expectations are higher here than they were in high school and that it's a mistake to take a lot of classes in your first semester. So what we very strongly recommend is that you take the three classes that are in your pathways cluster and one more course that brings you up to that 13 unit threshold. You can go a little bit over that, right? So if you want a class that brings you up to like 14 units, that's probably fine, um, but we really don't recommend that you that you take a lot more classes than that. Um, uh, Rena is asking, should you submit your Golden Bear advising final assignment after you find out if you got into the program? So we set up the timing for this so that you will know whether or not you got into the program before you have to submit that final assignment. Um, it was it was exactly why the deadline is when it is. So you should know when you're doing that, whether or not you're in and you can tell the people over your advisor and um, your LNS advisor that you're working with that you've been admitted into the program or that you're waitlisted. If you're waitlisted instead of being automatically accepted into the program, what we do is we what we, what we recommend is that if you are waitlisted, that you go ahead and enroll in other classes. And if you get a spot from out of off of the waitlist, we will email you and let you know. Um, and then we will help you through the process of dropping those classes and moving into the um, uh, pathways classes instead. So that's our recommendation on that front. Um, Esther is asking, 
Uh, are there any one or two unit classes? Yes, there are many one or two unit classes on campus. There are PE classes that you can take to go like get some exercise that are one or two units, highly recommend those. You can take what are called decal classes that are topical classes that are taught by other undergraduates at Berkeley. There's a website if you just um, uh, Google decal for Berkeley, oh, Eileen just put the website for that into the chat. You can see that there. You can go look at what the classes are through the DECAL program. You can also um, take what are called freshman and sophomore seminars that are small one to two unit seminars um, where that won't be related to these clusters, but are a small class with a faculty member that are often really interesting. Um, and again, Eileen has put the link for that into the chat. Thank you, Eileen. Um, Let's see, I'm going to back up into the questions. Let's see, if the cluster that you're interested in is 11 units, can you take an additional four unit class or would that be too much? Um, I would recommend if it's an 11 unit class, uh, if it's an 11 unit cluster that you really only take another small one to unit class to one to two unit class to bring you up to that 13 unit threshold. Um, the cluster will be uh, probably quite a lot on its own. Um, so just take something small that will give you a chance to acclimate to Berkeley expectations. Um, what is the workload for the classes? Are they more time consuming considering that they're specialized courses or is it about the same as other Cal courses? They really should be about the same as the other Cal, excuse me, as other Cal courses. Remember that two of these classes that you're taking are just regular Cal classes that we've just clustered together for you. The third class that's the seminar class is one where in addition to working through the material of the class, it gives you space to think about the connections between all three classes, but even that will still be a sort of standard workload for Berkeley. So these were not um, I, uh, a sort of higher workload than other classes are. Um, let's see. Angelica is asking, are, is Pathways a good option for freshman students who have taken multiple dual enrollment courses at a local community college? Um, Angelica, I think that really depends on what it is that you took um, and whether or not you're using those courses for um, other requirements here at Berkeley. And I would ask that question to, of one of the LNS advisors when you go through Golden Bear Advising, they'll be able to tell you more about that. Um, but that's a good question. Uh, let's see, who is teaching these classes? Graduate students, part-time faculty, full-time faculty. Okay, so uh, in the case of those small seminar classes, those are full-time faculty who are what we call tenure stream faculty, um, who are research faculty here at Berkeley. Those side courses are often taught by full-time faculty and are, but in some cases are taught by part-time faculty or the lecturers. The discussion sections that you will be in for those large classes, those are taught by graduate students. Um, but one of the things to remember about Berkeley in general, from our graduate students to our part-time faculty or to our full-time faculty, is that you know our graduate students are graduate students in some of the best doctoral programs in the country. And so these are very, very, very good students. Um, I, I know in talking to the departments as we put these together, they're often thinking about putting people who are their most experienced graduate students into teaching the sections for these classes. So you should have really good people in front of you in the classroom. I, I think in general, we have very high standards for teaching at Berkeley. Um, so I, I think that these will be great classes. The faculty are all really excited about teaching these classes. I've been meeting with them in their groups of three to talk to them so that the faculty are aware of the connections between their classes and are talking to each other. The faculty are really excited about this program. Everyone is excited to come in and start working with you in these kind of interdisciplinary um, ways like this. I think it's a, it's a program that there's a lot of excitement and energy behind on campus. Um, Madison asks, are the final exams for these cluster courses scheduled on different days and times? The, the final exams for these clusters will be at the same time that their regular scheduled um, exams are. So when you go to sign up for those classes, you can look in this in the, I think the exam information is on the, the schedule of classes. Um, Eileen, I don't know if you could take just a minute to go look and find where the final schedule is and pop that into the chat, but if you could find that, that would be very helpful. No problem. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, I, a couple of you are asking how could clusters impact scheduling in terms of holding a concurrent job? So what you would need to do is find out whether or not you can work your job schedule around the class meeting schedule. So this is just like any other class on campus where you would be expected to be in person and to be there for the classes and to have your job schedule work around those classes. And if there's a conflict, um, you know, usually most of the time employers are pretty flexible about sorting out classes around your class, or sorting out your job schedule around your class schedule once you know what that is. Um, but if not, you would need to make a choice about participating in the cluster versus what's going on with your job. Um, ah, Olivia is asking what the difference is between the between pathways and fall program for first semester. That's a great question. So fall program for full, fall semester is not themed. So you don't have those clusters of classes that are uh, that are tied together. Um, it does. The, those courses, some of them will meet major and breadth requirements, but not all of them. Um, so you would need to check against that um, to see what those classes actually help you with in terms of meeting requirements. But FPF is not necessarily set up to do those things. The only place where they're similar is that FPF also tries to create some smaller classes, but I'm not sure that it's all of them. Um, so that's the major difference. Um, Sophia, so these classes and the clusters are the same as regular classes, just in a smaller group setting. Yes, and they are also clustered together thematically. So they're designed to sort of be mutually reinforcing and to have different classes that are kind of looking at common problems from different disciplinary perspectives. Um, so that's the, the the major, that's one of the major additions too. The, the small group setting happens in that central hub class that is the seminar class and in the discussions for the large lecture class. Um, I, oh, also one of the other differences between FPF is that you're walking through all those classes with the same group of students. So you should get to know the 25 students in your cluster really well. You'll be in the central hub class with them and in the discussion sections for both of those wing classes. So you'll get to know those people really well. Um, uh, oh, Eileen says that if you want to know more about the faculty that are teaching in the clusters, you can go into the individual cluster titles, and there is a link with a faculty bio for every person that is in um, teaching one of our classes. And she also just put in the final exam groups there too. Um, uh, Carmen is asking, how are students that are signed up selected for the program? It's really just on a first come first serve basis. So we're just going through and looking for who signed up for what when we move the first 25 students who signed up into the particular cluster, and then we're putting everybody else on a wait list afterwards. Um, so really doing it early is to your advantage. Um, and again, the sign up is, forms are open now. They're on that lsfirstyear.berkeley.edu website. It's at the top of the page, the sign up form, and you can just go click in there. Um, but do make sure that you go and you read the FAQs um, that are on that page. You'll have to read it in order to be able to sign up for the um, program. So make sure you check that out too. And I think I've gotten through all of the questions. That was a lot of information in a very short period of time. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if anybody else has any more questions. I'm happy to answer some more. I'm happy to hang out on the screen for a little bit longer if any of you want to chat with me. Um, I, I, I just, I should, end by saying I'm really excited about this program. I'll be teaching the hub class for the technology and society uh, cluster. I hope to see some of you in that cluster in the fall. Um, uh, and otherwise, I will leave you with our campus motto, Fiat Lux, let there be light. And I hope to see you this fall. <laughs>